How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. I finally made it out here to the weekend, 11, 10 p uh, a.m., 11, 10 a.m., California time. January 9th, 2026. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 4.0 across the area of uh, Nicaragua, it looks like, down there across the uh, Middle America Trench. Also, some movement up into Arizona. That's a little odd to see some earthquake activity up here, isn't it? I don't recall any activity here in the last 30 days. Most of that been up north into Utah, but we're starting to get some southern extent here down into Arizona with a 3.7 earthquake coming in. That uh, is a ways away from any populated area out there around the uh, Colorado Plateau area. Some mountain ranges up here. Uh, but definitely away from any areas of population density, but... Uh, possible there if you were out in that region you definitely feel that earthquake uh, 3.7 at about nine what is that uh, about five miles deep here underneath the area well to the northeast of Flagstaff there by a considerable distance so really not around any populated areas but uh, kind of sticking out there like a sore thumb don't see too much earthquake activity out there in Arizona like that also it looks like we got some movement up into Yellowstone here with uh, a number of earthquakes happening there after midnight. I don't know if we got a swarm going on there or not, or maybe just some smaller quake activity. Let's go see what's going on there at the uh, USGS um, site here for Yellowstone. The YMC station should be up and running. Yeah, there's a couple handful of earthquakes or so. I wouldn't call this a swarm. Just a little bit of uptick for earthquake activity there across Yellowstone and it does look like they're reporting the majority of those quakes showing up as well nothing big all these are in fact below the 2.0 threshold uh, oil field still pretty active out there today uh, one earthquake up here in Colorado that uh, is an earthquake there from yesterday a little 2.7 also out in South Dakota eastern South Dakota this morning 2.8 New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. One little earthquake also down in the uh, uh, Tennessee area. Nothing big, just a little 1.9. All right, so West Coast here. See what we got going on. Uh, little, We're back to being a little spotty out here. We're around 20 earthquakes or so after the uh, well, last couple days. We've seen a little bit of elevated multitude count and magnitude count levels as well. Uh, we had a couple threes up there around Ridgecrest and... Uh, some down around this area as well. Right now, the latest quake, though, a 1.5 uh, near the Ukaipa area. That is just off the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault. I don't see anything of any uh, unusual activity for now there. But, you know, it could again, we could be seeing a big earthquake at any point in time. Uh, the Bay Area, a little bit more active here. we got a swarm stirring back up near San Ramon once again with... Even a three-pointer this morning. Uh, one three-pointer and a number of twos above the 2.5 level. This has been an ongoing deal here. One of the more longer duration swarms and more intense swarms that I think this area has seen in quite a while. Yes, periodically we do get these little clusters, but nothing like what we've had here. Uh, this showing 211 earthquakes here in the last 30 days near San Ramon. Uh, the largest being a 4.0, uh, but it really didn't start off that way. It really didn't start off with a four-pointer, and these are aftershocks, you know, like we would see in some areas. It just started up with a swarm, and these are just some of the magnitudes there that happen during the swarm. And a lot of times, this is key, a key indicator here of something bigger about ready to pop in the region. That is just off of the Calaveras Fault here, pretty close there to the Pleasanton Fault as well. Uh, of course, you know, that could be a sign here that pressure is pretty well locked and loaded on the Hayward Fault, kind of getting that pressure transfer that we do see on time, uh, on occasion uh, in nearby faults. Uh, that would be bad here for the Hayward Fault. Either way, it's something to watch closely here, folks, as we're getting that swarm stirring back up. And it does look like it's a regional uh, area here where we got a couple earthquakes even on the Hayward Fault, a one-pointer from last night. Uh, there's a quake there on the Concord Fault as well uh, this morning, 1.1, and a couple down there near Gilroy as well. So not uh, nothing big yet, folks, but, you know, don't let these, uh, uh, these little swarms fool you because they're really not doing anything in terms of relieving the strain out here. Uh, the Calaveras Fault in itself is capable of producing a big earthquake, but when you uh, mix in the Hayward Fault and... 
the Calaveras fault uh, in, in one rupture there or rupturing at the same time, well, that could be a much more damaging event there. Uh, so we continue to watch that. Got, uh, you know, that swarm stirring back up there today. Uh, further north into Northern California, relatively quiet. Not a whole lot going on up there. Some movement up into Northern Nevada. Uh, let's see what else. Washington and Oregon, pretty darn quiet looking right now. I don't see a whole lot showing up there. Uh, across the Pacific Northwest. Uh, world view of things. It looks like Japan's starting to stir back up. It's, it kind of it comes and goes in these cycles here where we're looking at a period of heightened activity, then it will die off for a day or two, and then it will come back there with a swarm. And that's what we got here today. Got a, another swarm there off the coast of Japan with a bunch of fours and a bunch of threes in there as well. That is right smack dab in the region where the uh, Japanese government put out a mega quake warning for here recently uh, within the last month or so. So still kind of keep an eye on that. These here, um, not uh, super deep, but it does look like it's away from the swarm area, a little bit more back here to the west. Here's some of the swarm that was stirring up here. It's actually been the last couple months that we've had a number of swarms up here. Uh, these two are the more recent ones, and then previous to these two, we actually had one down here. A bunch of sixes, including a seven-pointer up there. Um, but, you know, a seven-pointer is n minimal compared to what uh, uh, an 8.5 or even nine-pointer can do out here. So got some newer activity back further west. Pressure is still increasing in that area. Just watch that very closely. Um, further down south, Taiwan southward into the Philippines. Still seeing, uh, you know, a bunch of movement. That's, that is the crunch zone. I always like to call it the crunch zone because that's... Uh, pretty much where everything uh, tends to meet and subduct and pull apart and twist and uh, do all sorts of stuff there. Notice the general arrow patterns here of the plates all pointing there towards the Philippines, Taiwan area, down through the Indonesia region there. Pretty pretty good cluster of uh, pressurization from all the plates. Uh, New Zealand, there's that five-pointer from yesterday. 5.3 up along the Kermadec Trench this morning. Uh, nothing big happening there for now. Uh, the rest of the planet here, the Atlantic, pretty quiet. Mediterranean, some smaller quake activity. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, just some threes and fours down there along the middle of America Trench. Really nothing big going on. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii. Checking out the uh, latest earthquake activity here. Still getting a pretty good cluster underneath this region. Relatively deep. There is a couple shallow quakes there as well around Kilauea Volcano. Uh, should be getting close here to seeing another eruption at Kilauea Volcano. So let's go see what we have here today. Hope everyone's having a good Friday out there. A little windy out here in Northern California, but at least we got a little bit of sunshine right now. That is, uh, that's good. Give us time to dry up a little bit. We've had like a lot of rain here. Now we're starting to level back out again. Even a little bit of deflationary tilt. Um, not unusual. We have seen it uh, in times in the past there. Not this last time, but episode uh, 38 had a similar event where it would drop off a little bit. But these are definitely, uh, this is definitely a sign here that we could be getting close to an eruption. So uh, I said the 10th. Uh, that's tomorrow. It's possible it could happen uh, anytime here forward uh, in the next couple days there at Kilauea Volcano. As uh, far as space weather activity goes, back down into the B-Flare category. Uh, really not seeing a whole lot of uh, potential out there. In fact, Kevin here, the solar ham site, has dropped his flare threat um, quite uh, dramatically there. 1% or less for X-Flare, M-Flare at 20% chance, C-Flare 80, uh, 85% chance here. Let's take a look at the magnetogram image. Yep, look at this one here. Took a took a turn for the... Um, can't say the worst, right, or better, whichever you look at, whichever way you look at it. I got two separations here of the main sunspot area, and that's a sign that uh, it's dying out there. But we'll gotta, we will got to watch this area back over here. Uh, there is still a little bit of uh, complexity within a portion of that sunspot, uh, sun, sunspot region, but I don't think we're going to see anything major out of that. Same for this area and the rest of the sun. Looks pretty quiet out there. Not seeing a whole lot of potential. Uh, Aurora activity. Did that ever materialize last night? It doesn't look like it. You know, they were issuing a G1 class storm here for that coronal hole that's 
uh, fairly weak in terms of size and coverage. It's got uh, a little bit of coverage in terms of length, but you know, it's a really thin shot of high speed solar wind stream. And I, I'm pretty certain they're missed the planet uh, because I don't see any signs that it even came in. Uh, this is for tomorrow. One nine could see, you know, I, I see what they're doing. They're basing this off of the uh, coronal hole activity because there's a couple different parts here. We got this one that's just about facing the earth. Um, but this is still mainly a northern pointed uh, coronal hole. So anything that does shoot off here or anything that is flowing from here, the high speed solar wind stream should be directed away from the planet. But they do have a G1 class storm up there on the forecast for tomorrow night. Quick glance here at the next close approach asteroids to the planet. Uh, this one's coming in uh, today. Well, tomorrow it looks like. Under 500,000 miles, newly discovered 35-foot bus size asteroid there. Not, not uh, seeing anything major on the list here. So, yeah, that's good news, right? Don't want any uh, rocks to pay a visit here to the planet. Not, that, not uh, anything big, anyway. Slight risk for some severe weather across the south today. Uh, got a 5% chance and a 2% chance here for some tornado activity around those regions. So just a heads up. Wind damage potential. Also a little bit of large hail back across Texas and portions of Louisiana. So just heads up there uh, for today's severe weather threat. Taking a glance here at the forecast models. We'll put this thing into motion here. A little bit of rain for Washington. But after that, man, things are... Uh, Things look dry out there across the West Coast. A little storm system coming in from the north around the 20th or so. Um, but that looks uh, doesn't look like anything big. Pretty dry. I'm hoping that uh, things will pick back up here in terms of rainfall after a couple weeks of dry. You know, dry weather is okay, but we don't need the rest of the winter to be dry because we need way more than just 10 inches of rain for our water year. We're supposed to be up around 20 to 22 inches, so... If we only get 10 inches of rain here, that's going to put us behind. All right. Uh, I think that's about it, folks. Just wanted to keep it short and sweet. Uh, no new information there on Chomper. Just kind of watching as we go about each day. He's still taking his uh, medicine and still able to do uh, bathroom stuff and uh, eating and drinking in good spirits. He doesn't seem in any pain. The stones are moving around and they're passing there's some that's passing but he's not completely out of the woods yet just watching this closely um i don't need any of that news the news out there in the world is crazy right now uh but anyway have a good one we'll see you guys out here for the friday night update i think i'm gonna go outside and get a little sunshine here a little chilly with the wind but uh the sunshine is definitely nice to see have a good one we'll see you guys soon